The art produced here is some of the most beautiful in the Greek world. <laughs> I envy the potter's skills, though I'm not quite as envious of their clay-stained hands. It's bad for the nails. The Keramicus was a large, sprawling area northwest of Athens' Acropolis. While part of it was used as a graveyard, it was also dedicated to the creation of pottery. The Keramicus was so significant to the art form that its name lives on in the word ceramics. Perhaps drawn by the river, potters moved into the area and formed their own bustling community. It's believed that by the end of the 5th century BCE, hundreds of thousands of pottery vessels had been made in Athens, including everything from heavy, undecorated cooking pots to delicate and beautiful containers reserved for the most precious oils. Sadly, only around 1% of these works survive today, some only in small fragments. Raw clay from a river was hardly fit for a potter's wheel. Athenian potters used clay that was rich in iron, which created the distinctive orange-red coloring seen in Athenian pottery. But this high-quality clay needed to be handled carefully to avoid disasters in the kiln later on. The clay was first brought to settling beds, where it was mixed with water to wash out any organic debris like leaves. Once it was purified, workers kneaded the clay with their hands to push out air bubbles and create the texture necessary for a flawless finish. One of the goals of these early steps was to remove any impurities that could destroy a delicate design, or worse, render a vase unusable. Once the clay was cleaned, it was up to the potter to shape it into a vase by spinning it on a wheel or pressing it into a mold. Their choice depended on what shape they wanted for the vase, but they also considered the possible scope of its decoration. Potters did not work alone. A workshop might have had many people working together on different aspects of production. Potters collaborated with many different painters for decorating their creations. Some of these painters even became potters themselves. All in all, a single vase could be worked on by many different artists, with each one focusing on a different aspect of its design. After the pots were shaped and decorated, they were packed into kilns for the lengthy and delicate firing process. The process had three stages, oxidation, reduction, and reoxidation. The main purpose of the firing process was to carefully manage the clay's exposure to oxygen. The chemical reactions caused by firing gave the pots their distinctive orange-red coloring. This also turned the designs made from the clay decoration slips glossy and black. The most difficult part of the firing process was managing the fires themselves. It required an enormous amount of skill and experience to properly judge the exact temperatures needed, and even the smallest mistake could ruin several hours of work. Vases could be decorated in all sorts of ways. Before 530 BCE, Athenian vases were decorated using the black figure technique, where figures and designs were painted as dark silhouettes. At the end of the 6th century BCE, Painters created a new technique called red figure, an inversion of the painting process that left the figures in red and the background in black. This gave the artists more freedom to better explore details like muscles and individual locks of hair. Designs were sketched onto the bare surface of the pot using a thin, sharp tool. Thin relief lines, which helped define subtle elements like facial features, were added using a brush made of a few stiff hairs. More elaborate vases were sometimes gilded, but these decorations were so delicate, they were most likely only added after the firing process. As you can see, pottery was an arduous and delicate process, but was exemplary of the skill and craftsmanship that dominated Greek art and culture. 